Products just sent me one of their new LED panels. It's a bicolor light. Uh, it's a really nice lightweight LED panel, 4x4. I love panels like these because they're super versatile, they're really lightweight, which makes them really easy to rig all over the place. So I thought this video would be a really nice excuse to experiment with some different top-down lighting scenes, uh, step you through them, step you through the work process to get to the final result, some of the things I learned, some of the things I had to overcome, and then along the way, take a little look at this light, which I love, and also look at how I treat the footage in post. So this is shot on the Red Komodo on a 35mm lens, the Vespid lens, uh, with a speed booster. So we've got a really cramped small bathroom, you know, it's tiled so it's super reflective, not an easy space to light or work with, got to bear all that in mind. I had a rough idea of what I wanted the shot to look like, so I knew I wanted to sort of sculpt the light on Steph's face, I wanted some gentle roll off. I wanted to create a sort of grungier look, be some contrast in the scene, not for it to look too flat. I boomed the light over on a C-stand, tilted a little bit away from the face to provide a bit of roll off. But the light's quite big and we were filming in a tiny space so I couldn't quite achieve that. As you can see here, everything just looks really flat. So then I introduced some negative fill. The neg wasn't quite cutting it so then I began to fiddle around with the light and sort of jammed it and tilted it all the way forward so none of the light was really beaming down on Steph anymore. And instead we're sort of using it as a bounce from above her. This really seemed to work, so now we've got this really lovely effect on her face. We can see now that we're really sculpting light across the face. The light is just kissing her left cheek. We've got this really nice roll off and even the shadow side of the face is sort of gently lit. It's not too harsh in terms of roll off into shadow. And generally just getting this nice dramatic contrast to the shot. So I think for a quick 10 minute setup, I was pleased that we were able to achieve that quite quickly. If I'd had more time and resources, there are a few things that I would do differently. As you can see with this final setup, when we got the light where we wanted, it was sort of creating this really hot spot um, on the back corner. And although that is producing some nice contrast, it just doesn't look super natural. It looks a little bit too like it's artificially lit rather than a sort of natural bathroom scene. I'd probably experiment with positioning the light and flagging that top wall a little bit of light from it, maybe adding some black fabric to those tiles just to reduce the spill, perhaps using a smaller LED, a 2x4, and then maybe use a secondary light to adjust the level in the room. Obviously there is a bit of a hazard working in this environment. The light is waterproof, which is great, but the light was cabled outside of the bathroom, so there no cables on the floor to make sure there was no water power hazards. And then we ran the light off female batteries as well, just to keep it super safe. Next up, I kind of wanted to do something that was a little bit more abstract. This is actually a really simple setup done in our tiny front room and I'm using my huge 5-in-1 reflector. Obviously the size of this backdrop really limits how wide I can shoot on the lens because if I go too wide then it sort of breaks the magic of isolating me in the dark space and reveals that we're actually just in my living room. The Godox light is just boomed above me. Most of this is shot on the 75mm Duzio film Vespid. I also switched to the macro lens to get some of these really up close shots. I'm stopped down to mostly T4 just because I want stuff to be a little bit sharper and in focus. Again, we're on the speed booster. I have to tilt my head up quite far to illuminate myself, but I think this is a really nice setup. I think I preferred using the setup with the dark side because it's just a lot more dramatic and really isolates me as the subject. And again, what I'm trying to achieve here is just the sort of contrast and sculpting of the face. So having the light just kiss the side of the cheek closest to the camera. We were getting a few hot spots on my skin. I then added a five-in-one reflector to sort of diffuse it. 
it worked a little bit, but I kind of wanted to see how far I could take it. So I also took some of this unbleached muslin and just sort of wrapped it around the LED. Obviously using so much diffusion really cut the output of the light. So if you were using this in a sort of studio setup and the light was a bit further away, you'd have to factor that in. But I really liked what the extra diffusion did and the way that it just affected the wrap around the face here. It's a lot more subtle and softer and the roll off and transition is much nicer. And you just avoid some of those hot spots on the skin. And it's a subtle thing, but I really liked it. One other thing I wanted to point out is just the eye light. If I'm looking up, like you can see here at the right angle, we catch a reflection of the light in my eye and it just makes everything pop and I love that. By having the eye light, you sort of maintain contact with the eyes in the image. I think if you are playing around with moodier, contrasty looks on faces, especially if you put a lot of roll off into shadow on one of the eyes, having some kind of eye light will really help sell this look and allow the eyes to pop. to mess around with motivating the scene with a window and using daylight so this is what we've got here with the window behind Steph Steph on the bed really simple setup boom the light in above her it was a really dull overcast day so it looks like this whole scene is being lit by the window but it's actually not most of the level on Steph and the wrap around her face and that hard edge is coming from the Godox light that is directly above her spill of it is also lighting uh, the bed as well and providing a nice even key on the scene. We put a blanket down because we have a white bed sheet and it was just providing too much bounce back up and sort of it was distracting and overwhelming the scene so towards uh, the right of the frame this area where we get some of those white bed sheets in shot so I've actually just pulled that down in post and I've used this little practical lamp in the background to provide a little bit of colour contrast as well which I quite like. And I've just experimented with sort of moving and opening the curtains a little bit just to see how that affects the light and the scene and the play between dark and light. But yeah, I really like the gentle wrap again of light around her face, falling into shadow, it looks really natural. This light is just beautifully soft with the quite small softbox attachment on it. We've got the overhead lighting here to sort of give her a little bit of fill on her hair. And then I'm also later introduced a hard spotlight behind her again as if there's some hard light coming in from the window and I also experimented with pushing some more light onto Steph's face so with the context of the little lamp in the background I hung a piece of unbleached muslin beamed some slightly warmer light there just below daylight probably like 5200 and then the warmth of that and the sheet bounced back gave this really nice soft warm uh, wrap around Steph's face that looks like it's probably motivated from another lamp in the room and it just looks a little bit more natural than if I'd lit her face with something a bit cooler. So we're using that back lamp as a motivating lamp to sell the warmer light on Steph's face. Uh, one thing I would have added is a bit of neg to the side of her face and just pushed a bit more shadow onto the right side of her face on the left side of frame uh, just to sculpt it a little bit more but there's a really nice even key on her face and I like the roll off on it. And then finally, I was just playing around on my own and I've sort of moved the Godox light a little bit round. So it is top down, but it's also a bit more front facing and providing the key on my face. I wanted to do some harsher stuff with like trying to pretend that the sun was just at the edge of the window. So I put the spotlight in the background. It's sort of just about work so you can't quite see the light stand in the background. Um, and then on this final shot, kind of wanted like, I don't know, a sort of sunrise, sunset shot. I set all the color temperatures much warmer. But the color temperature of the window was super cold. So in post, I just put a power window over it and then absolutely cranked up the color temperature to make that window look as if it was a bit warm. It doesn't quite work, but it's just a quick shot I was experimenting with to get this kind of moody orange glow that you've probably seen in the sort of Blade Runner-esque look. I wanted a moody tungsten lit scene here that was gonna be motivated by the warm room lights. Generally, I'm exposing the camera here at around ISO 400 to maintain detail in the shadows. We are pushing quite a lot of uh, light into the scene. If you look at the behind the scenes shots, 
uh, which we're then pulling down in post. Again, just to prevent um, any noise cropping up in this footage. We're using this floor lamp here to motivate most of the lighting setup. So I'm doing my best to match the color of the Godox light to this. So I think we're, you know, floating around the 3200 Kelvin mark, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, and then the camera is set a little bit more above that just to maintain some of the warmth. The most important thing here was to control the spill of the Godox light. So again, it's boomed above me on a C stand. It's slightly in front of me just to push as much light as possible onto my face and tilted slightly in preference of my face. One thing you've got to look out for with overhead lighting is just sort of like Emperor Palpatine eyes and sort of shadowy eye patches um, as it's not the most flattering on people. I also experimented with some backlighting, which again, I really like, and I sort of swapped the camera angles around and using this really harsh backlight, it's a little Ziyun Mollus 100, just adds a little bit more drama to the scene, a bit of punch and allows us to flare the lens as well a little bit. So I really like that. And on this setup, we're essentially just using the overhead light as a fill light to fill in some of the shadow on my face. And we're relying on that harsh backlight to really add some depth and pick me out as a subject in this frame. I think it's one of the best LED panels uh, that I've used. I also own the Amaron F22C and they both have their pros and cons, but I just prefer this Godox one. I think it's a bit quicker and easier to set up, quieter to operate, the fan in it is just a little bit quieter, it's waterproof, and it just seems like it's a bit brighter in output because it's bicolor and not color. Um, and it just seems a lot softer out of the gate than the Amaron. The Amaran packs down into a slightly smaller space, which is a pro for that, whereas the Godox has a slightly uh, chunkier ballast. If you are a solo shooter and wanting a lightweight setup, the Amaran's gonna give you the smallest footprint. The Godox, in its case, is just marginally heavier and larger, um, but I think is the better buy in my book. Which of these lighting setups did you like the most? Uh, I think for me, the bathroom scene was my favorite. Um, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you to Godox for sending me this light. It's a great piece of kit. If you are thinking of buying it, you're in the market to buy an LED panel, I'd really recommend it. Hopefully you can see from the results that I got that it's a really versatile and high quality bit of kit. Uh, so I've got an exclusive discount as well uh, with an affiliate link if you check out the description. Consider using that. I earn a small amount of commission from that and it just helps support the channel. But yeah, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. I'm Ed Prosser, and until next time, see you later.